Hi guys. Well, let me try this a second time. Uh, I just did this whole well, half of this rant to find out I had been talking to myself as my camera collapsed on me. Anyway, for the second time, <coughs> it is uh, finally starting to feel a little bit like January here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here in the Point Lonesome Swamp in the middle of the oasis of freedom down here on this lovely but brisk Tuesday, January 11th, 2022. So, uh, before I get into today's chronicle, just <laughs> want to give you a little uh, update on uh, what was going on. And as a few of you might be a little bit aware uh, things going on yesterday, but you might not be aware of, I came within inches of having this channel ripped down. I could have lost this, this entire channel yesterday, and I'm not 100% sure that I am out of the woods, so if this channel disappears, uh, you can figure out probably uh, some general idea of what happened to Collapse Chronicles. Anyway, it was a close call. <clears throat> Let's hope it's over with. But in the middle of all of this uh, behind the scenes YouTube copbot drama going on in my life yesterday, I came across this essay by one of my Collapse Chronicles heroes, Paul Kingsnorth. Anybody not familiar with Paul Kingsnorth? Uh, we're going to change that uh, today. But the essay that I found was the single most spot-on analysis of the, uh, well, what are we going to call it, uh, of the C word, which then uh, mutated into the D word, which is now mutated into the O word, and we're sure as shit not talking about overpopulation with the overlay of the dreaded V word. But anyway, my, my hero, Paul Kingsnorth, who is, is one of the most uh, intelligent intellectuals working the planet today, uh, has penned the single greatest uh, analysis of what is going on uh, with uh, this bad hair day that I have ever encountered. But of course, if I read the single greatest uh, analysis of this, uh, of this dreary subject, I would certainly get the video ripped down, quite possibly get the entire, this entire channel ripped down, even breathing the title of the video uh, could get me into some hot water uh, on this platform. But what I am going to do is take the reckless calculated risk of posting the link to the single greatest uh, analysis of the issue I have ever encountered in the links to this in, in to this uh, to the description of this video so if you are one of the five or six people on the planet uh, not uh, you, you, you know that has one brain cell remaining and have not fallen into the camp on either side of the discussion, please go on this link and read this uh, to uh, help educate yourself on what is unfolding on this planet. So anyway, that's that. That was a long preamble, but, you know, as I was reading that essay, of course, I went over to Paul's excellent website, which I have not uh, visited in a while, and I found this essay 
Apocalypse Soon that came out a, a few months ago, a little bit satirical, you decide for yourself. So those of you who are not aware of the work of Paul Kingsnorth, we're going to give you a, uh, a taste of the genius of Paul Kingsnorth. If I can find what I did with my, uh, my glasses after the collapse of that last video, and now my other glasses, oh, here they are, right here. I had to put on a pair of glasses to find my glasses. Anyway, and if you enjoy this essay and like what Paul has to say here, maybe you can go over on to that link and find the essay I would rather be reading. Anyway, take it away, Paul Kingsnorth. Apocalypse Soon. <clears throat> I don't know when this is supposed to be maybe written about and maybe 2070. I'm not sure. He did not put a date on it. <clears throat> Apocalypse soon. The numbers were in and everybody could see what was coming. At least 10 billion human souls by the end of the century. All of us clamoring for food, water, space, and the triumphant benefits of the all-conquering global economy, which the Western powers had been cajoling, threatening, or enticing the rest of the world into since the dawn of the Age of Empires. Now this economy encompassed everything everywhere and everyone on earth. There was no escape, even on the highest peaks or in the deepest forests, from its products, its worldview, or its 15G connectivity. The entire planet, from mahogany trees to office workers, was now a resource <coughs> to be eyed and totted up for the necessary and beneficial growth of the global machine. That growth, of course, came with a few side effects, <clears throat> a changing climate, collapsing ice sheets, mass destruction of ecosystems, the raising of forests, and the highest extinction rate in 60 million years, not to mention growing social polarization and massive economic inequality. Everybody had known about this since the late 20th century, but they had all presumed or, or, or hoped that somebody else would sort it out. The World Economic Forum was on the case as it is today. As a matter of fact, the World Economic Forum was on the case after all, and Bono, and that Swedish girl, and those weirdos who dressed up as dinosaurs or whatever and chained themselves to bridges. This sort of thing had been part of the furniture for so long that people barely noticed it anymore. <clears throat> but it was not working. Everything had been going in the wrong direction since the Limits to Growth report had correctly predicted back in 1972 what was on the way. By the 2020s, it was uncomfortably obvious that the report's predictions, mocked or ignored at the time by the great and the good, had turned out to be startlingly accurate. Spiraling global consumption had led to rising demand for resources 
which were becoming exhausted as land base land bases and ecosystems were degraded by human use, <clears throat> leading to increasing prices, social and political strife, ecosystem breakdown, and looming civilizational collapse. Limits to growth had identified the period between 2008 and 2030 as the point at which the collapse would begin to bite. <clears throat> With stalling growth, climatic instability, rising death rates, and social turmoil as evidence of overshoot. So it had proven. <clears throat> Even the most committed apostles of progress and development could see the writing on the wall. Something radical would have to be done. The old school greens, who, in response to limits to growth, had preached about pie in the sky stuff like degrowth, simple living, organic farming, or forging for nettle tops did not have a sellable message in a world of demand with westernized consumers all insisting on the right to low cost, low cost Wi-Fi connectivity. Everyone was sick of being nagged by people like that anyway. The more grown up environmentalist the kind who wore business suits and wrote policy papers about the regrettable but realistic need for nuclear power and geoengineering knew this very well. Solutions had to be big, brave, and global. In the end, as wildfires, droughts, ice melt, and supply chain collapses mounted, a stark choice presented itself. An ambitious plan to save the earth or a collapse into barbarism. That was how the media sold it anyway, and since it had been long anticipated, nobody really minded much. We were all locked into the machine by now. After all, all of us reliant on its largesse to eat, sleep, and work. The worse things got, and they were getting worse fast, the more appetite there was for bold, assertive, planetary scale and since the corona panic, everyone had gotten used to obeying the authorities and submitting to behavioral monitoring in order to prevent mass disaster. And if you want uh, more on that sentence, go on the link to the uh, essay I would like to be reading, but this one is a pretty good consolation prize. Back to Paul. <clears throat> and so the global empire arrived largely on schedule. Corporations, well-heeled NGOs, states and regional blocks, trailing a bevy of media and intellectual lapdogs in their wake, consolidated their Green New Reset, or whatever they were, call, were calling it today, with impeccable ease. <clears throat> the New World would be progressive, inclusive, open, sustainable, gender neutral, and above all, intensely profitable. The ongoing assimilation of any ecosystems, 
cultures, perspectives, and lifestyles that conflicted with progress would be implemented in a manner which ensured carbon neutrality. The sustainable global machine, smart, interconnected, perpetually monitored, always on, would encompass everything and everyone, producing cascading benefits for all. The long-held Western dream would finally be achieved for the world, would become one, one market, one set of values, one way of living, one way of seeing. <clears throat> By the time some of the environmentalists realized who they had sold their souls to, it was too late. But what in any case had the alternatives been? The small is beautiful crowd with their patchouli scented jumpers in their 1970s talk about limits and sovereignty had been, had been canceled out as eco-fascist long ago, exiled to distant small holdings and housing co-ops with their well-thumbed copies of Tools for Convivality and other yellowing tomes by dead white men. Now that an actual eco-fascism was on the horizon, a global merger of state and corporate power in pursuit of progress that would have made Mussolini weep like a proud grandfather, there was nothing to stand in its way. Unlike previous empires, this one knew how to present itself. With wind farms rather than dreadnoughts, pictures of smiling children rather than squares of red co coats. It used eco-friendly and inclusive land and in blah, 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 blah. it used eco-friendly inclusive language as it enclosed land, funneled wealth upwards, and coated wild landscapes in, a, in renewable technologies made from rare earth metals. A regrettable necessity, but a temporary one. Sustainable asteroid mining was well on the way. But it was curious how the wealth and power seemed only to stay in mainly the same hands. Hmm. Odd, too, that the rolling eco-crisis never seemed to actually go away. However, many billionaires and NGOs attempted bright new techno-fixes. In fact, the tighter the empire gripped, the more everything seemed to slip away from its grasp. It was almost as if the, the techno-fixes themselves were the problem. Hmm, imagine that. Over time, the inevitable happened. The age-old progress trap closed like a Venus flytrap patiently digesting its victims. The genetic modifications and the nanotech solutions went awry as Earth's inscrutable systems refused to behave the way the computer models had predicted. The mass dumping of iron filings into the ocean did not sequester as much carbon as hoped, but it did lead to an unexpected collapse in whale numbers. The Bill Gates-funded sun-dimming technologies 
had succeeded in lowering the planet's temperatures, but the feedback loops that kicked in lowered it much more than expected, leading to mass crop collapse and famine, which in turn caused riots across the world. <clears throat> the early 2040s saw half of Africa subsisting for several months on locust swarms, while Silicon Valley's finest dined on sustainable insect burgers and in their New Zealand hideouts. <clears throat> Tower farms, super pigs, eco drones, cloud seeding, space reflectors, everything was tried, but the trajectory did not change. Earth's limits refused to budge. To the Faustian West, saving the world had been an, just another means of trying to control it. But Gaia, like God, would not be mocked. Life went on, but civilization increasingly did not. <clears throat> Cities fell, waters rose, deserts spread. <clears throat> Jeff, Mark, Richard, and Elon went into low earth orbit on separate rockets, all claiming to have gotten there first, but their head freezing facility in the Sonoran Desert suffered a tragic thawing episode when the solar farm, formerly known as Kansas, was knocked out by a freak solar flare. <clears throat> by the late 21st century, the oil wells were slowly bottoming out, the rare earth metals were exhausted, and the boundless renewables future of electric cars and limitless green energy had been filed away and forgotten like an embarrassing teenage crush. The asteroid mines never got off the drawing board. The population peaked and started falling along with the sperm counts. The suburbs and the oceans slowly emptied and the stuttering internet became so poisonous that even Mumsnet came with a trigger warning. Everyone told themselves that progress would be happening properly if only those people were not in charge. Most of all, a great disappointment seemed to spread like an ink stain through the remnants of the West as it dawned on everyone that there was to be no spectacular denouement. There was no revolution and no restoration, no Star Trek, but no Matrix either. There were no robot soldiers to fight and nobody was building a Death Star the best anyone could manage at this point in industrial capitalism's downward curve was a weekly little spaceship built by a glorified bookshop manager <clears throat> which could stay up in space for all of three minutes. The end of the world, it turned out, was less like Terminator and more like a Star Wars prequel. You wait for years in anticipation and then it is just a letdown. In other words, it was history as usual as the latest grandiose human project faced a long grinding decline. The apocalypse, in the end, had turned out to be boring. But 
Maybe this should not have been surprising. The word apocalypse in the original Greek simply means unveiling or revelation. In an apocalypse, something is exposed that we all need to see but are refusing to look at. And this is a theme that he uh, builds upon a lot in the essay that shall not be read on this channel. <clears throat> he develops this idea a lot more. <clears throat> what we saw as our delusions crumbled was that we had never really been in control at all, <clears throat> which is what Terence McKenna was saying 25 years ago, we had misunderstood the world and our place in it. We had come to it as conquerors, boors, abusers, rather than lovers or friends, so obsessed with orbiting Earth that we had forgotten to look at what we were orbiting. Modern humanity had turned on both creator and creation, but our rebellion, as long predicted, had failed. Now the post-apocalyptic skyline belonged to those who had always known that, to the monks, the hermits, the anchorages and the forest tribes, to the workers on the margins, steadily improving lives, human and non-human, with no desire to shout about it, to the small nations and the edge dwellers, the quiet and the unambitious, to the earthworms and the shy hedgehogs, the suckering plants and the ever-flocking birds foraging in the ruins of the latest fallen empire to those who had seceded and who had generated rather than draining the finite pool of life. By the 20 third century, some of those who still remembered quite what had happened, it was hard to piece the facts together since everything of value had been stored on the now obsolete internet, noted with some irony that the society which had grown out of the rubble of the machine had looked curious like, curiously like the one proposed by those early eco-fanatics and proposed by those early eco-fanatics, land-based, low-tech, community-centered, cored around a religious story and highly suspicious of any grandiose claims much of England now look like the 14th century only with CB radios and better dental work. Over in America, the Amish had bought up most of what had once been New York State and the remnants of the self-billed hippie culture of the Pacific Northwest had been restoring the deserts created by the megacities of the 2070s. The blades of giant wind turbines had, were bent into plowshares. The meek had, after a very long detour, finally inherited the earth. Amen, uh, brother uh, Paul Kingsnorth. I'm not sure if that. Uh, I honestly don't know if if Paul was being satirical or not in that excellent essay 
Apocalypse Soon. But if you enjoyed Apocalypse Soon, uh, you can go over to Paul Kingsnorth's website. I think he actually has two or three out there and read a lot more uh, genius from this man. He has several books out there published, only one of which I have read, I'm embarrassed to say. But, uh, and then, uh, if you dare, go read. If you dare, and if you are one of the few people who still care to learn the truth about what is going on, here in the apocalypse, ah, you can find the link to that video. I wish I was able to read here, but since the forces that be will not allow me to read it, you're on your own, guys. And with that, I think I'm going to go do laundry for the first time since leaving the state of New York. Uh, more than two months ago, and I highly suggest you get out there to the laundromat and wash your dirty clothes while you still can. Bye, guys.